Hey, Rui, good morning for me. Good evening over to you in Portugal. Hello, good morning. Nice to meet you. Yeah, <laughs> thank you for coming on again. I appreciate you coming back for this. Uh, I know this is going to be a, a pretty exciting, I think, talk with the, some really game-changing features certainly coming to the Power BI service um, that's either out today kind of or coming uh, coming soon. So I'm, I'm very excited for the stream today with you, for sure. Always a pleasure to engage with you and uh, with all the community and be available to learn and, and uh and share some uh, some knowledge so absolutely and thank um, you for for the invitation yeah yeah no i i, I mean i think just just talking with you and uh, get, getting a chance to experience some of the changes that, that you've kind of been at the helm with recently and working with with uh, matthias on um and th this year has certainly been really really exciting when it comes to some of the, the features and development and uh software that that has certainly come out and i think developers uh it's fair to say I've been given a lot of love <laughs> when it comes to some of the new stuff that's been coming out. Um, even for you, uh, I would say it's yeah. uh, it's been cool to to kind of watch your journey over the last few years because you know you were part of the MVP community for um, how many years did you have an MVP before you uh, switched over to the CAT team um, uh, and eventually as a program manager? Five five years, yeah, if I'm yeah. Not, not mistaken, five or six, yeah. And it's uh, it was a really a privilege to. Um, connect with folks like you and uh, and be part of that great great community of mm -hmm. people that are just willing to share and uh, and uh, learn with each other. So and uh, yeah, so I joined Microsoft two years ago um, at the Power BI CAD team where I had a blast and working with legends like Chris Webb. That was the first person that I followed uh, online when I started working 16, 17 years ago. So it was a really, really honor. And, uh, and then I, I had this opportunity to, to join the product team uh, and at the Christian Way team, uh, working and focusing to make the, the Pro BI developer in Power BI successful. And I must say that it is amazing uh, how far we have come in the last few months, because uh, if, we, if we think that a few months ago, the only way to do source control, that is a a massive requirement for any anyone that uh, that wants to uh, to to work within a professional team. It was not even possible. So you needed to use OneDrive to to be able to uh, back up your work. Um, mm -hmm. Yes, you, you, you could use external tools like Tableau Editor and work with a BIM file, um, but now. You you can still and work with with uh, with Tableau Editor, of course. Uh, to unblock things that are not even possible to do today in Power BI Desktop, like calculation groups, but at least to have basic source control and code development, you can you don't need to leave Power BI Desktop to be able to do it. And uh, and yeah, so it's um, um, uh, it's been a pleasure to to be writing this uh, this uh, these features and uh, um, and making the the Pro BI devs uh, life uh, easier. And I will also say that the often some of the best tools are ones built by people who need the tools uh, for themselves or are yeah. individuals who have been in the trenches with it, like Tabular Editor. Uh, Daniel yeah. built that because he needed a better tool to work with with uh, Power BI, um, or not Power BI, but like with uh, with Tabular models specifically. And uh, DAC Studio with the same kind of origin story. Uh, PBI tools from Matthias also built because he needed stuff something to do certain things for his company. And I I think to a degree, you know. At least among the people that I've known in the community, you you have a very strong technical background and you know a lot of code when it comes to languages and been able to to put some Rube Goldberg machines together when it comes to automation and stuff. So I, I can very much see how the uh, the attention and the love that went into the you know, a lot of the features that we're now going to be getting with like developer mode um, that definitely reflect a person who would very much be like this is the exact things that I would have wanted from from the software. And I know like other people, other similar developers. Um, these are the like it, it. It's built very much for the for that uh, voice of, of those pro developers who need those extra features and having the ability to do the the Git integrations and all that other stuff. And um, so I, I'm very excited to see how this will continue to to change going forward. But it, it's really exciting changes for sure. Yeah, and I can tell you, we are just getting started. So <laughs> be, be ready. Exactly. Yeah. 
Um, but uh, I know we've, we've mentioned a few terms like developer mode, um, uh, Git integration. I've also uh, mentioned a little bit of like the, the work with Matthias Tierbach and uh, some of the stuff that he's done with Timbuld. But as far as like uh, wh where we're kind of headed today in our conversation with Power BI developer mode, where would you like to get started? So uh, yeah, w we can start uh, talking about uh, what is developer mode, um, yeah. and I can uh, do a, do a quick demo um, uh, about the feature, and then we can we can talk uh, about some of the use cases, so some of the things Absolutely. that may not be com uh, immediately visible that that you can do with developer mode, and also with Fabric Kit integration. Um, and yeah, maybe maybe we can start with there and then open just uh, for, for questions and uh, and have a, a discussion, an open discussion. Sounds good? Absolutely. Uh, that sounds great. I can flip over to your screen if you're ready. Yep, sure. Beautiful. Okay, so the first thing that I want to say is, um, so developer mode, the, the whole goal of developer mode of course, that it is to make a better Power BI, but I, I like to think that it's more like making a better user of Power BI, uh, and uh, and uh, making that user uh, be able to, uh, the Power BI developer to be able to create his stuff in a more reliable way because you can have source control, so you can make mistakes, and you don't need to be worried about backing up your your work because if you are using source control and you have Git behind the scenes. So everything that you do, it's a commit and you can go and you can revert your, your, your changes. So you can automatically have everything backed up, even if you don't enable code development. So uh, using developer mode, you will get more reliability. Uh, also, you will get collaboration. And for the first time now, it is possible to have two developers working on the same Power BI project not in the same machine. This is not co-authoring. That may come in the future, but it's not, it's not, we are not yet there. Uh, but with Git in the middle, you can have two developers working on their machine and then it will be Git responsibility to merge the changes uh, from, uh, from, uh, from two developers. And last, and, and this personally, uh, it's, it's, it's one of my favorite, probably my favorite, is efficiency. Uh, if you are a lazy developer like me, where you are, where you have a, let's say you, you have a report with 50 pages, uh, by the way, a report with 50 pages, it's not a good idea, <laughs> but let's say you have it or you inherit that report and somehow you need to make a change in all the 50 pages, like replacing the title that exists in every, in every single page, you either can do it by clicking and doing a thousands of clicks and, and do that and waste one hour, two hours, or you can also script it, or you can do a find and replace in developer mode, but because we are opening the file format, we are letting you make changes in those files, you will be able to do it. The, the, the report example, it's not the most fortunate one because uh, today, in the public review, uh, we cannot allow you, or, or we, we actually documented that changes to the report uh, are not supported. Why? Because that report file, the report.json, it is a JSON file. You can make changes to it, but we cannot support it. Why? Because it's not documented. So we don't have any documentation on that file. Unfortunately. Um, unfortunately, we will have it, <laughs> okay? We are working on it. We are working really, really hard to make it happen, um, but uh, but today you, you cannot do it. Uh, but for the data set, but, but a final replace, if you are finally replacing a, a text file, it will be fine, it will work. Um, but for the data set, you can go wild because the data set, it's an open format. It's been supported for years. So you have the talk, you even have APIs to manipulate that file using, that is called uh, the tabular um, object model. Uh, Tom, um, so you can you can make changes with Tableau Editor outside of outside of the, um, outside of the, outside of Power BI Desktop. So efficiency, it's is something that uh, I I feel really strongly about it because it's it's literally letting you do things more efficiently. Uh, you can. Uh, uh, you can do batch edits on uh, on uh, on uh, on on your file, so you can generate content. 
So you maybe you you may generate the data set. You may have those strategies of the the master data set or and then the child data sets, and it's just a matter of using Tom or scripting to do those 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 types of things. This was possible before. I've done that uh, as a consultant, so I, I was obsessed with this type of stuff. Uh, but it was not supported. Now it is supported. So if you if you do the changes, if you follow the rules, and that is one thing that is really important about developer mode is that every single file that we publish have a schema. So we will let you know what properties you can change, what what types uh, those properties can have. It, we will let you also use that schema if you have an external tool. If you are writing, you are you are writing an external tool, and we also want to allow. And uh, and um, and unblock the next big wave of tools, probably for reports in the future when we open the report format. So this will also unblock new possibilities. Um, so if you are creating one of those external tools, you can use the schemas to validate the changes that you are making on your external tool and make sure that the change will be valid when they they are opened by by the user uh, using Power BI Desktop. So, uh, and the last point, actually, it's the middle one. Um, uh, we also want to reclaim the position that we had as the enterprise BI leader, uh, using using enterprise and having enterprise BI tools. Uh, so we had that for years with my with with analysis SQL Server analysis services and Visual Studio and SSDT. So these types of stuff for people that are in this working in this industry as long as I am, uh, this was when Power BI came along. That was amazing. It, it changed my life. It changed the way I work. It, it is. I was overwhelmed when when I first saw Power BI for the first time. I believe it was presented by Donald Farmer at the SQL Bits. Actually, <laughs> it was Power Pivot, uh, not 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 Power BI. Um, but before that, we didn't have any of these. Uh, pro BI problems because you had Visual Studio, you you had SQL yeah, Server, yeah. you could do CI/CD there, mm -hmm. and then when Power BI came along, we kind of lost those those features. We kind of lost those tools. Um, and fortunately, because of Tabular Editor, we we could in a way be in the middle. And 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 if you if you if today you are a really advanced pro BI developer working in Power BI, probably you will be only using Tabular Editor. But the thing is, not everyone is a big BI pro. They are working in teams, and w there are people inside the team that will be very comfortable working with an external tool, and there will be people that inside the team that won't be that that comfortable working with with an external tool, and they will pre prefer to use. Uh, the, the standard tool that they can find examples all over the world in, in a, a lot more documentation that is a Power BI desktop. So, the, and this is just to give a, 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 an idea of the of the importance of, of the Power BI developer mode uh, and also uh, uh, together with the Git integration, it's basically bringing those functionalities, this enterprise level features into the platform, into the tools, of course. Okay, so what what have we done with the Power BI developer mode? So first now, the, actually, the only thing that we did, and it's in double quotes, uh, and, and let, let's start with desktop, okay? And then we will move into the, into the service. So the only thing that we did was letting you save to a folder instead of saving it as a binary uh, PBIX file. That's the only thing that we did. There was a lot of work behind the scenes to make this happen, to uh, make sure that the changes that are made in the external tool, they, the Power BI desktop will be okay with them. And if, if it's not okay, it will tell a, a meaningful and good error to the user uh, to let the user fix what it did wrong. Um, so there, are, there were a lot of, 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 of work, but in reality for the user, uh, for someone that is using today Power BI Desktop, the only difference, and and, and for them to be able to to uh, take advantage of uh, of um, to use developer mode is they they the only the only difference is they will have a new save as type. It's called Power BI Project, PBIP, 
where they can open, so you can open any PBIX file that you have, uh, or you can start uh, so a new development and you will see a new option. And that new option, is, it will be called um, uh, Power BI project. And when you select this new, uh, this, this new save as type and you pick a folder and you hit save, this will, instead of saving as a binary file, a single file, that one thing that I want to make really, really clear, PBIX is not going away. PBIX is, it's still the most important file format that we have. And it will make a lot of sense because if you are an analyst and you don't care about source control, the PBIX is the best format because you save it as a PBIX and then you share it. It's a single file. A PBIP, it's a folder. So it's more suitable for uh, team development for source control, okay? I just want to make really clear that the PBIP is not a replacement of the PBIX. And by the way, you can do bidirectional conversion. So you can convert your PBIX to a PBIP and you can convert a PBIP to a PBIX. And you can uh, go back to the PIP or go back to the PBIX. Uh, I also have been getting some questions about program, having a programmatic way to convert the PBIX to a PBIP. Uh, so we have it on the backlog. Uh, not sure if we will be if it will be on the short term uh, we will do something on the short term but today this is the only way that you can use to convert a pbix to a pbip or you can also enable the fabric kit integration upload the pbix and enable the git integration and you will see that the content will be exported to git as pbip those are the only ways for you to convert between the the, the, the two formats so, and as you save to a folder, uh, this will uh, let you uh, unblock source control. So you can uh, um, use any uh, uh, any kind. So you can uh, use Git or whatever other uh, source control uh, uh, tool that you have. I don't know if anyone is still using the Visual Source Safe or TFS, but normally these days is is Git. Uh, but uh, you can just use whatever you want. Um, you need to have, and this is important, you need to have an external tool. So Power BI Desktop today doesn't have any kind of uh, Git notion or Git integration. Actually, the only thing that Power BI Desktop does in regards to Git is to create a Git ignore file uh, to make sure that things like the data of your uh, Power BI development and some local settings, they are not going into the source control um, uh, repo, you can decide to. I don't. You can decide to 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 uh, remove that git ignore and still push those the, the 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 data file and the user settings to to git if you want. The only valid reason for that is if you have a team and uh, and the refresh is really really slow and you, you don't want to make you don't want to every developer to be refreshing your data set so in that scenario you may want to store the the cache abf in git but it's a binary file so it's not for source control maybe just to reuse maybe it's even easier to just share the the abf file between uh, between the developers but you need to have an external tool the my recommendation is to use vs code so it's a free a uh, Microsoft tool that will get you a Git window like this, uh, where mm -hmm. you you can initialize uh, your Git repo, and after you initialize your Git repo, then you can uh, um, you can you get even just for you, you get the source control, and you can compare between versions. You can revert your changes. Let, let me quickly show you. So I have my PBIX file. And I will show how to enable the the the, the Git repo and and take advantage of this. So you have your Power BI desktop. You go to File. So you open. I open the uh, PBIX file that I have. You go to File, uh, Browse, and you pick a folder. So could be this one, and then you select the PBIP format. Uh, one thing that I forgot, you need to enable, uh, and this is important, so to have that format visible, you need to first go to your option and settings and go to the preview features 
and you need to enable this uh, preview feature or be a project PBIP save option. After you do that, that new save option will show up. Until you do that, it, it won't, it, you, you will still only be able to save as a PBIX and a PBIT. So let's save as, and again, choose the folder. I have a lot of folders. I think it's, and, and this is also something important that when you select the folder, the save as PBIP won't create a folder for you. So normally the workflow is you create a folder, an empty folder, and you save to that folder. So let's say you select desktop, the, 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 the desktop folder. This will create the PBIP file and the two folders, one for the data set and one for the report. So the folders that represent the data set and the folder that represent the report, it will create directly in the desktop folder. So normally you don't want that. So you wanna you wanna create an empty folder that will have the name of the project. I uh, usually have one that I always clean up for the demo. It's this one, PBIP demo. Uh, you, sel you select the PBIP and you hit save. And when you do that, this is what will happen. So desktop will save your work. It will save the PBIP. So what is the PBIP? A PBIP is just a shortcut. And the reason, the main reason why we did it now is because if you, you we didn't have a, a PBIP, how mm -hmm. can you open back desktop from this development? Uh, mm -hmm. It was okay. uh, today you can you can also open by going to the report and opening the PBIR, but without the PBIP. So if we didn't have a PBIP, it was maybe we needed to do some kind of uh, Power BI desktop open from folder. Uh, that could work, maybe we will do it, but for now uh, we don't have it. So we wanted to have a file that will let you open back Power BI Desktop. And this, but this file is just a shortcut in reality. What this file is doing is uh, uh, pointing to the, to, the report, um, to the report folder. And you can in, change- In the same folder that it's in, right? So like, I'm assuming yes. if, if you just took all of those, copied it, I just pasted it onto a different computer, Opening this would still basically scan for those two folders in the same whatever folder structure it's in. So you can still transfer it to other locations, right? Yeah, it's not scanning anything. The PBIP. Yeah. What it's it's actually you need it's referencing the 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 re, if let let me show you. So sure, please. Okay, let me show you. Let let's put something that doesn't exist in here, like uh, or two, and save. This will give me an error. This is not scanning anything. So that, the PBIP, we can say that it's it's just the information where the report is, hmm. because yeah. desktop is opening reports. So, uh, yeah. And this is a type of hardening that I was talking about, showing some mm -hmm, meaningful mm -hmm. error message saying, hey, uh, I cannot find this report definition. Probably the artifact is missing. So uh, go back to VS Code, OK. If the, if the report exists, now I can open it back. Now, uh, now another thing is the, the, it doesn't need to be in the same folder. So let me show you another thing. So if I create another folder, let's create a folder A, and I copy this content into this folder, I can uh, go to the PBIP and say, OK, uh, this is uh, in the A folder slash sales report. This will work. The PBIP, the Power BI desktop, what we'll do is it will look into this path. If this is a valid path, a valid relative path, it needs to be a relative path. If you put here like, something like C drive, it won't work. So it needs to be a relative path, but it could be okay. a parent path, a folder. So you can do things like this to navigate into the parent folders. Um, it will it will just validate this path. If it's a valid path, it will just open the report. And another interesting thing, and maybe we are going a little bit more advanced for an initial demo. <laughs> Sorry for that. Uh, I no, I, I like getting techy. So okay. Uh, and another thing is, it will open the folder, the report folder, and then on the report folder there will be a file called definition PBIR, and this definition PBIR 
it's also targeting the data set folder because the report connects to a data set, right? The same thing that when it, whenever you publish a PBIX into the service, you get two things. You get the data set and get the report. And if you see the lineage tag, the, the lineage view, the report mm -hmm. will be connected to the data set. In PBIP is exactly, exactly the same mental model. So when you save as a PBIP, you say it will save a report and it will save a data set. The report will be targeting the data set. How can it, it discover the data set? It can discover the data set because on the Power BI definition file, the PBIR, it is targeting the data set. And the data set you can see that is going one folder up and then uh, it's the sales.data set. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. It also means, and that's the reason why I didn't uh, make, uh, I didn't save and, uh, and, and show you. Uh, so let's say you want to have the sales report in the, in the folder A. If you want to do that, for this report to be valid, to be to, for you to be able to open this report, you also need to fix the path of the data set. So instead of being one folder up, it needs to be two folders up. Why it's two folders up? Because you are here, you need to go one folder up and then another for, for, for uh, so you are, yep. sorry. You are, uh, so you are here, you need to go one folder up, another folder up into here. And then yep. in, in this folder, it's where you have the reference to the cells that are set. Okay. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, okay. The, the, it, it's open. Let's just delete this now and, and go back to the, the first initial demo. Why cannot, I can. So there the next thing that you do when you save as a PBIP is to initialize a Git repo. And if you have easy VS Code, this is really easy. So you can just right click, open with VS Code. And in here, you have this uh, source control uh, toolbar in here. And when you click it, it will detect that this folder doesn't have any Git repo. It's not initialized. Uh, and you can click on initialize repo. And, uh, and when you do that, you provide an initial message in it and you save, and now you have Git. Uh, and now every change that you do, let me show you that because this, this is something that, uh, it's, it, it is important. So let's say, uh, you do, uh, a change on a measure. Let's multiply the number of sales by two. It's always good when, when the sales go up. Let's save it. What having Git will 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 allow you to do is not only to save your work and 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 backup your work, but with, it will also let you know every time you make a change where that change happened. So you mm -hmm. can see that because I changed the measure, I multiply it by two. I can uh, I can see that the only change so and Git will track on the file, all the changes that you made. So in this case, it's just one. Uh, let's do another. Let's, for example, let, let's uh, create a new table. And by the way, like these are all, uh, just to, to reiterate, these are modeling changes that you're doing. Like there's uh, yeah. uh, no, nothing today for like, the, you know, if you added a new page and a new chart, that would be in the report layer, which is um, something that's being worked on. Yeah, so if I if I create a new column, let's say the new column is just uh, referencing another a, a new a new table, just referencing another table, and you save. Now, as part of the same commit, because I didn't commit the previous one, uh, I will also have this change in here. So this will this is really good for you as a developer, as an individual developer, to track all your changes, and this is valid for the data set but it's also valid for the report. So if you create a new page and uh, that new page has a visual and you save, Git will also track that change for you. So this is also, if you think, it's also really useful for you to, to, to learn what the tool is doing, right? Because when you have Git and now let me uh, uh, do a commit and then Let's say you want to know what happens when you change a visual type. 
what what, I, what what is the code that the tool is changing? So you change a visual type. Let's change this into uh, I don't know uh, a bar chart and hit save. When I go back to VS Code, this will the change will be here. Yes, I know it's not uh, it's not uh, pretty uh, today. Uh, it's a single line, but this will be the change. You can actually track it. So you can see, okay, it changed the property mm -hmm. visual type. Okay. Having Git also helps you to also help someone that is starting and, it, and, and that someone is a pro developer, because let's face it, this is having source control and initializing Git. It's not for the, for the, the bad, the basic analyst, someone that it just cares about creating reports. It's not. This is more for the professional developer, the, the, the person that also really cares about uh, saving his work, about collaboration, about deploying the, those changes, about uh, being safe whenever you want to do a change, you, you, are, you, you create a branch, that's another concept that is important to, to learn about, and you do the changes in isolation, and you can, can go back to the main branch to work in the production version. So, it, it's for that type of that that type of uh, of person, and that type of person also cares about learning what the tool does. Why? Because if you want to do a batch edit, you want to learn what the tool does, and then you write a script that will replicate uh, the task that you need to run for a uh, hundred times, right? Exactly. Okay, so. It, and yeah, so when when you enable Git uh, and when you enable the the um, and you create a Git repo, this is what you get. So you get source control, uh, you get history. Oh, I almost forgot one thing that is really important. So I'm making those commits, and now I have the history of all my development. So I can click on this view history, and I can see okay, uh, all my changes on every change. I can see. Uh, the files that I made on those changes. I can click on the file and I can compare side by side what were those changes. Um, I can, if I want, okay, I, I made a, f you have like multiple changes, multiple commits, and you want to go back to, to the initial version. So you can come here and you can create a new branch from this initial version. And, and you, when you create that new branch, you will be back on that initial version, and it can work in your development as it was on that on that time. So, mm -hmm. this is the type of stuff that even if you don't uh, work in a team, having PBIP saving your work as a PBIP and working in developer mode, uh, it's a massive advantage. A massive advantage. Now, this this also means that if you if you are a Power BI developer and you like and you 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 need this stuff, you also need to learn how to use Git. So you need to be familiar with Git. You need to be familiar with these tools, uh, these type of tools like VS Code, uh, or there are a ton of uh, of others. Uh, you need to learn this, okay? And that's why on this slide I have learning the basics of Git. What is a Git commit? What is a Git pull? What is a git push? What is a branch? How can I branch my work? Uh, what type of branches you should create? I'm sure that, and, and, and I've been watching the community, there are already some blog posts talking about this, doing some best practices. Um, I, I hate to say this, but it depends from company to company. Um, it, it's, it's difficult to say that, okay, this is your the branch strategy that you should follow. Um, it, it will depend on the team. It will depend on on other strategies for other co-developments that exist in other projects. But of course, that we will have guidelines, and and at least the ones that we see uh, most uh, most of the customers uh, following. And uh, and I'm sure that we we will update also our documentation to have some guidelines on this. But there are already a lot of blog posts uh, uh, and community. And this is the the amazing thing about Power BI. It's the it's the yep. the amount of of people the amount of people working on the community and just sharing what they do on their work and what the, their their learnings, what what works, what doesn't work. Um, it it is amazing to 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 see that. 
Well, it's a lot of, I think, the schools of thought that go into the the organization and specifically how and when you should stick with the, uh, with the main branch versus creating a new branch. Um, I'm, it, it's, it's a bit of art and science when it comes to that at the end of the day. But as long as you're using it to some capacity, like it, it, it's going to make sure that you're, um, you have good lineage to, to, to roll back if you ever need to um, undo changes or switch anything else. And like you said, just be able to isolate um, certain yeah. workflows. Uh, to uh, prevent any issues. Yeah, the, the, at least even if you don't use branches, it will be fine. Uh, you will still, at least you will have every change uh, source control, then you can, um, and it's, it's already a big advantage. So branching is the next step. And branching, one more time, there are ma many strategies. The one that I see the most is you have one branch by for each environment. So let's say you have a Power BI project. So you have one branch for the production, one branch for uh, test, one branch for development. And then every time you need to do a development, you start for, from the development branch and then you create a feature branch. So you are a developer. You let's say you want to create a, You need to create a new uh, a new report page on a report. So you go to the development branch, uh, you create a new branch from that branch, because every time you create a branch, you need to select your source branch. So you create a, the, the, what we call a, a feature branch, calling that will be called a feature new sales report. So you create that branch, you, you create your, the report, so create the new, the new report page, or it could be also a new report, uh, so you do your tests, you make, you do your development, you test it, you make sure that is is fine, and then you do a pull request. And the pull request is to take your branch, your feature branch, and merge it into one of the um, one of the uh, let's say the main branches. It could be the development branch. So you do a pull request to development, and then that is a pull request from development into uh, into test and then another pull request from test into 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 main. Or if you want, so and this is let's say a little bit, uh, the, the 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 typical scenario that I see. Another one is there is no even a, a, a development and a test branch. There is only the main branch, but the 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 feature branch is important. So every development it's always made in isolation. And why? Why, why it is important to make the, the development in isolation? It is important because when you do the, the when you create a feature branch to create that new report page, during and let's say creating the new report page will take you two days. So you need to work on two days on a new report page. Before branching, if you had to do something like this, I'm sure that someone like you, Reed, you will do a backup of the PBIX. Let's call it, you will call it something like yep. production PBIX. You will create mm -hmm. a new PBIX calling PBIX new page. And you will work in there. Why you are going to do that? Because you know that during that two day period, someone might be asking you, hey, uh, can you make this quick change? Or that is this bug on that, on the, on the, on the, on the current report that you need to fix. And you need to fix it now. You need to fix yep. it now because it's a bug. So, and then you, you you if you don't have that backup because uh, if you don't have the, that backup you would be in a position where you are already developing the new report page and now you need yep. to revert all your developments roll back all your developments to make that bug fix and publish a new version with branching this is so much easier because now you create a new branch you are working on the feature branch and then let me show you and then so uh, let's say I create a new branch. Oh, by the way, let me show you how to create a branch in VS Code. So uh, you go, th this is the way I do it. There are probably other ways. So I'm working on the main branch. You come here, cl click, and then you, it will show you these options, create new branch. So let's create a new branch. You give it a name, feature new page. So I just created a, a feature branch from that main branch. You can see that it's it's instant, it's really fast. And now when I'm working on Power BI Desktop, I'm working on that new branch. So let's create a new page. 
and I'm working on this for two days, right? So I'm working on from two days, I'm making my developments. And on the first on the first day of the two days, I got a request from my boss saying, hey, you need to make a change on this sales. This, this We have a bug on, on our numbers. So what I need to do, and this is also important to you, you need to close desktop because desktop is not aware of things that are happening in Git. And then, and, but to, it, right now, if you go to the folder, just look at that. Uh, I don't have multiple PBIX. I'm just open. I'm, I'm opening. I'm working exact on the same folder I was. But now I'm. This is my feature branch. I'm working on the feature branch. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. let's make a commit. And uh, I got that request from my boss saying you need to fix something on the on, on the on the production version. So the only thing that I need to do is go again to VS Code. Click here and switch to the main branch. And like magic, now if I open my PBIP again, I will be I have the, 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 the version that is in production. I have my main version. That page that I created on the feature branch won't exist uh, in, in my main branch. And if I open the PBIP, it won't have that new page. And of course, so I can, uh, so, okay, I don't have that new page. I only have the page one. So yep, I do, yep. I do, uh, I do my fix, whatever I need to do. I save it. And I do another commit. Uh, change. I save it. And and now guess what? Now I, I need to go back into my into the work I was doing. So what you need to do is click here again and go back to the feature branch. And when I just by changing this, one more time, restart desktop. Desktop it's not aware. What what when you change the branch, what VS Code is doing and Git is doing is replacing the whole files that you have in this folder. And uh, now if I open the PBIP back again. This will open uh, with the page that I was working. So now, that's depending, why, <clears throat> depending on like how big the files are, it might take a couple of seconds. I'm assuming for the swap to, to happen, just in terms of the, the yeah. Tra transfer. Yeah, 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 yeah. But remember something: the PBIP is not adding into Git the biggest file of them all, and the biggest file of them all is a file called cache ABA. This is not going into Git. The cache ABF, if you, if you have, this could, could easy be, easily be a one gigabyte file, two gigabytes file. This is the data okay. of yep. the data yep. set. Then this file is not going into Git or it shouldn't go into Git. So if I, if I, if I uh, see my, in, in VS Code, you will see that this file is actually great. It's not, it's not, it will never, when you swap, when you swap the branches, this file is not going to be swapped. So the the change, you are right, it could take a couple of seconds, but it should be a couple of seconds. If it is okay, minutes, okay. Uh, I used to say this to, to, to my team uh, back in consulting, if this takes minutes, it smells, it smells bad and it's you have something <laughs> wrong. You either yeah. are putting things in source control that you shouldn't, or you, you, are, you have one of those situations of a report with, uh, hundreds of pages okay it smells so if this takes a lot of time you should be worried <laughs> because something will 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 uh, will will be bad in the future for you okay uh, so this should be this should be fa a fast operation normally so uh, i think i just opened the, and here i have the new page so mm -hmm. okay just this and now let's talk about the code development but just this even if you are a single developer, you can you can make your life so so much easier, right? Because you can back up your work, you can work on multiple versions, and you don't need to be uh, you don't need to have multiple PBIX files v1, PBIX v2, PBIX v3. It's just branching, okay? Um, and uh, and yeah, so and, and when you enable, when you create a Git repo, so we are in this stage, you can also 
bring uh, other players into the game like Azure DevOps or GitHub and have a, git, a remote Git repo. And when you have a remote Git repo, that's where you can have multiple developers. So you can have developer one, developer one working on, re on report one, developer two is only working on the data set. And this is, this is something that happens a lot. Uh, so you have two developers working on the same project. One is focusing on the reports, another is focusing on the data set, uh, but it's the same uh, PB, uh, Power BI project. And then it will be the Git repo, the Git remote uh, repo, that is uh, Azure DevOps, that will handle the, the merge between the two. So basically, the both developers, they are connected to the, to the remote Git repo mm -hmm. and they are mm -hmm. syncing. So they are getting each other changes. And it normally, let's say if one is working on the report and another is working on the data set, they are working on separate folders. If that is, there won't be any conflict because they are not messing with each other. Now, if they are working on, let's say the same uh, uh, on the data set, so they are both creating measures, if they are creating measures on different tables or even on the same table, there will be something that we call, uh, that, that it's named uh, Git merge. And that Git merge, it will probably just work on the data set. On the report, unfortunately today, uh, if you have two developers working on the same page and on the same visuals, you will have problems. Uh, the, uh, basically, uh, the, the, the Azure DevOps, doing it will fail doing, uh, doing the auto merge and it will ask you or one of the developers to do a merge. And the merge, it will probably be choosing between one or the other version. But this is also better than before because at least you will get someone telling you, I have a conflict. You need to merge, you need to solve this conflict. Okay. Uh, but this is for the reports. For the data set, uh, uh, because it's, a, it's a, um, a format adjacent, if they are just creating measures, it will probably just work. Okay. Uh, in the future, when we bring Tindall into the game, this will be mm -hmm. much better because Tindall has a much, much better source control. Uh, integration, it will be multiple files, it will be a folder representation of the data set. Uh, so this will make uh, the, the the merge uh, conflict story uh, a lot, lot better. Uh, Reid, are, are we are in time? Uh, we will, we have, I think, up to about 40 minutes uh, to continue to go past this. So like we, we have the soft hour, but honestly, I've had these streams go up to an hour and a half. So I'm happy to continue to be as deep divey as we can. Um, I think there are a couple of questions queued up that I, I want to bring up. And I also do like for my, my personal favorite from this is um, is the, the ability to have multiple reports in a single data set um, it, in the in developer mode, which I want to get to as well. But if, if I can, let's bring up a couple of questions and I think uh, use use that to answer a few of those. Um, some of the rest will keep queued up for the general queue at the end. Um, but one of the questions here, uh, he wanted to know if Visual Studio uh, will eventually be able to be used as development platform for like the BIM files and Git integrations uh, in the near future. So like how much removed can we get from Power BI desktop to a degree or developer mode or otherwise and into Visual Studio? So uh, to be honest, at, 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 the, uh, at the short term or mid term, we are not investing in, in Visual Studio. So the developer mode story is is uh, is focused on Power BI Desktop. So we want to bring mm -hmm. those experiences into Power BI Desktop. Um, there will be some things for Visual Studio Code, like there there will be a Tindall uh, extension for VS, Visual Studio Code that will let you author your data sets using Tindall, having syntax highlighting, uh, color coding. Uh, refactoring uh, mechanisms, um, but for Visual Studio and SSDT, uh, we are not in, we are not uh, investing in, in that for now. Okay, perfect. Um, on that one, and then Donald Parrish wanted to know is uh, related to the Git integration. Um, what are some ideas or um, future plans related to the Fabric Git, integ uh, Git integration and deployment pipelines? Okay, so at the moment, uh, and, and this this is uh, this will change, and the, and the deployment pipelines will get uh, a much better uh, integration with the Git integration. But at the moment, 
the 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 use case that we are seeing is you can have a development let's say a development workspaces and in the in the development workspaces is where you uh, you enable the git integration uh, and you have the branching you have uh, you have the source control but the test and production workspace you use deployment pipelines to move to to publish uh, between those 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 workspaces that's the typical workflow we see so uh, because if you have deployment pipelines uh, in the multiple environments together with git uh, it won't work it's either you use git and fabric it integration to uh, to to uh, to move between the stages so development test and production uh, and you don't use deployment pipelines, and this is the stage at the, uh, right now at the public preview, or you can still use deployment pipelines, but for the final stages, for, and, and you will leverage the Git integration and the branching uh, at the development stage. Perfect. And, and there are some things in deployment pipelines that they, they could be a challenge to do uh, today with the Git integration, like changing a parameter during uh, 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 when you are moving between uh, between stages, those things you cannot do uh, today with uh, with the Git integration. So you need to have, let's say, you have you want to have a uh, a branch for each environment, so a branch for development, test, and production. So each environment needs to to have the parameter configuration. And the connections configuration um, mm -hmm. to the right databases to the of that environment. Exactly, perfect. Um, I think I'll do one more question, and then if we have a chance to also talk about that uh, kind of the uh, the shared data set scenarios with PBIP files, I think that would be awesome uh, to get into as well. But uh, there are a few uh, key, great deep dive questions from Greg. I think I'll get some of them answered towards the end Q and A session. Um, but one good one I, uh, that I actually wanted to ask too is. Will there be a possibility to deploy parts of a PVIP programmatically via API, as an example, data sets only or the report only? Yeah, uh, don't uh, I, uh, I cannot talk about timelines yet for this, but definitely. Mm -hmm. Okay, we will have APIs that will let you deploy only a data set, only a report, um, a collection of reports and data sets. Uh, so we will have APIs. Um, it's still early to to share some timelines on that, uh, but uh, we will happen. Excellent, fantastic. Okay, y'all, I'll keep the rest queued up then uh, for a little bit later. But thank you for answering those questions and helping out on that. And then, uh, yeah, if you if you want, I like I'd, I'd love to kind of uh, take a, a dive into how this um, the PBIP files can kind of help better manage those thin reports and shared data sets. Yeah, and I, I can be here talking to you and and everyone for another hour. I do have an art stop at uh, in twenty minutes. Uh, I have to pick my That's kids. So. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, well, whenever you want to stop, we 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 can stop on that. But I'm happy to keep going. There's there's, yeah. there's a few questions, and I, I think uh, some other stuff that we can walk okay. into. Yeah. Got some some. Uh... Well, something that uh, that it's not uh, may not be let's say visible at first glance, and it's um, it is uh, it is something important. That so when you save as a PBIP, you get one folder for the report and one folder for the dataset. And why? Mm -hmm. It's because a PBIX is just one PBIX. You can only have one report and you can only have one dataset, right? So you cannot have two reports in in one dataset when you open a PBIX, correct? But if you think, you already had this in the service. So if you publish three PBIX uh, to, to the service, uh, you will get three reports and three data sets, correct? So, it, and, and if you enable the Git integration in the service, this is what you will get in, uh, in DevOps. You will get a folder like this one on the, on the left. So, and in here you, you have, uh, one, one data set, two data sets, three data sets. Uh, actually, I have only have two data, two data sets in here, uh, mm -hmm. and I have uh, five reports. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. some of the reports are connecting to uh, one data set, and other reports are connecting to to the to the sales data set, and some reports are connecting to the stocks data set. And, and this is 
why I say that this is the same with the, the, the developer mode, it's exactly the same mental model that you have in the service. And this is something that is perfectly possible and supported for you to have a situation like this, where you have multiple data sets and reports in the same folder. You can have multiple PBIP files uh, that, one more time, the PBIP is just referencing a report. So this PBIP yep. over here, uh, it's referencing uh, probably this uh, this uh, report over here, this stocks, uh, it's referencing this one. And I even have a test uh, uh, sales uh, PBIP that is a report that I don't want to that I don't want to get published, that I want I don't want to, to get published to the service. So I, I added specifically this test uh, uh, reports to the gitignore file, uh, but I can still have a PPIP and open it. So this is something that you can do today. So you, you, you don't need to be limited to have one folder uh, with just one one uh, one report. So let me just quickly show you. Yeah, essentially, what you have like a the, the, that top folder can really just represent the entire artifacts that you would have in a workspace to a degree. That, exactly. That's exactly the yeah. same mental model. And tomorrow, yeah. let's say you have uh, notebooks, and notebooks also have in Fabric notebooks also have a a, a, a client tool that is VS Code. So. When you enable the Git integration in that workspace, you will have a folder for that note notebook. Tomorrow, you will mm -hmm. have a folder for the lake house. Uh, okay, yep. it's it's exactly that mental model that we want to achieve with with developer mode. Um, so, you uh, uh, when you get these folders, you can and and the way you open the report. It, this is also something that is important to mention: is you can either open, create a PBIP like this, or or reuse a PBIP that you already have, and uh, and point to the report. But always remember that you the PBIP is not the most important thing. It actually, a much more important file is the PBIR because the PBIR let you not only also open and the PBIR is inside the the, the report folder. Uh, this will also let you open Power BI Desktop again. So this it's a valid extension that when you install Power BI Desktop, uh, you will see an icon saying, okay, this can be opened by Power BI Desktop. When you and it's exactly the same thing as opening the PBIP today. Um, so you can open it. And this PBIR, it's the it's more, much more important than the PBIP because it's here that you have the connection to your data set, okay? So having multiple fold, multiple uh, items in the same folder is something that is really powerful because now you can also have, um, you can also have, um, uh, like say a project that has 10 reports and one data set and everything will be packaged under the same folder, and then you enable source control and you move it into Git, and you don't need to be moving around with all those PBIX files. And uh, and also, also really, really important, is you don't need to du duplicate the data. Because with PBIX, to get this, let's say, let's not, let's forget this, uh, the stocks and the, and the sales. So to get two reports and the same data set to be working locally, you need mm -hmm. to have you 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 need to to have two PBIX files, and those two PBIX files will have the data set replicated in them, right? Of course, that you could be connecting to a a, a data set in the service that works, but if you wanted to have a, a complete local development experience, you couldn't, because the PBIA the both PBIX files both reports also will hold the data set. Now that's not the same thing anymore. So those these two reports, they both connect to the sales data set. So they are both connecting uh, to the to the to the sales data set like this. Uh, and um, and uh, and uh, whenever you open one of these reports, this will also open the data set for for edit. So and if you make a a change in the data set, like changing a, a measure, this change. It's not happening inside the report folder. This this change is happening at the dataset folder. Okay. So that other file, that that other report file that's currently open, does that uh, does that inherit the changes, or do you have to like reopen the file? 
the other file that I have already opened, not sure if I understood your question. So, so you're opening the report, uh, the, the, uh, the report file from the project. Um, and you, you okay. make a change to the data set it's connected to. If you had two, if you had two report files okay. open that were connected to that data set, would the other one auto refresh or would you have to like refresh model or anything like that? No, they don't have uh, today. They don't have uh, visibility to each other changes. So this, mm. if you do that, if you if you open the, I open the sales report, and now if I open the sales overview uh, file, uh, in terms of the report, they are completely isolated, so no problem. But on the on the data set, they are editing the same data set. What this means is. If uh, on one instance of desktop you create one measure and another instance of desktop you create another measure, mm. the last one to save will win. Perfect. Okay. okay. So th this is one of the things that in the future we, it's one of the things that I have on the backlog uh, and we have on the backlog to improve to somehow maybe let you open multiple reports and not loading the data set uh on each power bi desktop window and let you swap between the reports but today this is not uh, like that so today when you open the pbi the, the report it's opening the report but it's also opening the data set for edit and loading the data set into memory okay excellent and uh, another thing and now that we talk about folders one thing that it's also really interesting is you can have a situation like this as well so you can have um, a repo uh, and a folder uh, that will have uh, um, one folder called sales and another folder called stocks and inside the sales folder you have reports and data sets and inside the stocks folder you also have reports and data sets and when you enable the Git integration, and let me also quickly show you how to enable the Git integration because I completely skipped that part. Uh, so when you so you have you when you have your you published your work into into uh, into DevOps, um, I didn't show you how to do it, but uh, there are uh, on the documentation you will see a video that shows the steps how to move from um, from the 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 git re uh, the, the vs code after you you initialize your repo how can you publish and move this into uh, uh, azure devops uh, and once you have uh, uh, your work in azure devops um, you actually don't need to uh, to to um, oh before that so once you have your work in uh, uh, your project in azure devops so what you need to do is you can go to a, to a workspace uh, in Fabric and you click on workspace settings and in here you will find an option called Git integration. And yes, this is only, you will only be able to do this in premium workspaces, okay? A pro won't, won't get this. So, and after you click on Git integration, uh, I don't want to mess with this one, let me open this one. Um, so every workspace has this, uh, the Git integration. Let me disconnect just to show you how to do it from the scratch. Uh, so you have Git integration and you need to select your DevOps organization. Right now, we only support Azure DevOps. Uh, we, we, we do plan to also support GitHub, but for now it's only uh, Azure DevOps. Mm -hmm. So you connect to your organization, you select the, the project and you select the git repo and also you select the branch and when you 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 select this if this is an empty workspace it will just run if it's not an empty workspace it will make you a question what do you want to do do you want to sync what you have on this workspace into git or do you want to delete what you have in this workspace and uh, uh, synchronize what you have in the in the in in Git into this workspace. So normally, this is the the option that we want, uh, and you click sync. Mm -hmm. And I'm not going to wait for this just for the interest of time. But what Fabric will do is it will see, it will connect to your Git uh, repo. It will read the folders that you have in your Git repo, and it will create one item for each folder so in this case it will create one report one data set 
and uh, and uh, and another another report. Now, what I want to show you, and this is the basic functionality. And once you have, uh, once you you are in the service, uh, this is also a, a, a this is a bidirectional connection connection because you can uh, get content from Git, but you can also uh, make changes in the service. Uh, let me make a small change like this and hit save. So you can make changes in the service. And then after you make that change, so Fabric will also detect that, okay, you made a change in the in the in this workspace and will let you commit that change into back into DevOps again. And then you can even go back to desktop in, in locally and uh, and continue that work. This is this is something also really really cool and and uh, and uh, to uh to to allow let's say in a, um to allow you that you, to have some of your developers working in desktop and other uh, power bi developers only working in the service and the service makes things a lot easier because you don't need to care about vs code you don't need to care about commits you don't need to care about any of that you just make your changes and whenever you, you you want, you you commit those changes, you push those changes into into Git. So it's a lot more easier. And also, this also removes that really bad practice of making report changes in the service. Because that's why I like I was shaking my head just a little bit because like historically, like any time I hear like make changes in the service, there's that like cringe, like you don't want to do that. But not uh, this instant integration with everything, like a change you make, you immediately commit it. Anybody who opens it back in desktop immediately sees those changes. You don't have to download the file. So that exactly. that precaution kind of goes out the window because you're basically just you're just browser editing versus desktop editing, but it, it is seamlessly integrating to the same spot and and backing up into the same location. So there there's not really you know it, there's mentioned no concern over doing that. Anymore. Yeah, because uh, and uh, uh, us BI develop BI pros we like that expression source of the truth. This is the same thing. Yeah. Now the source mm -hmm. of truth is DevOps. It's it's the GitHub. Uh, now whenever uh, uh, that's why this is bidirectional. So you can make you can create something in desktop. You do a commit. It's synchronized to GitHub uh, uh, to do DevOps, and DevOps will create that item from you in the service. And then someone in the service can make a change, create a new report, make a change in the data set, like creating a measure using the web modeling. Uh, and commit that change into Git. So the source of truth is here. So even the pro devs, even 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 if you you if you are that person that never edited anything in the service, and why did you 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 didn't make any edit in the service? You didn't make it because you know you knew that you had to do it twice. You had to do it in the service. So let's say. Uh, there is a request to create, to make a, a quick change on a, on a measure. Uh, normally your workflow is, okay, let me go to desktop, make that change, test it, publish it, uh, and only do it once. If you do it in the service without Git integration, you need to do it twice. You need to do that quick change in the service, and then you need to remember that you need to do it locally to then uh, have, uh, have it source control in, mm -hmm. in DevOps. Not anymore, because everyone is connecting to GitHub. So you can actually go to the web modeling experience, change yep. the measure, commit into Git, and then tomorrow, when you are back at uh, at the office, you open back, uh, you 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 synchronize the changes that uh, that were made in DevOps to the folder. You open Power BI Desktop, and that measure is there. So this this also changed that that uh, let's say bad practice, but. Exactly. Uh, and yeah, I know I, I'm jumping a little bit, uh, but uh, I, I want to show you something really cool. That sure. is one parameter that uh, it's it's there, but it's kind of in a way I don't see a lot of people talking about. That is the Git folder. So when you do the connection into Git, one more time, I don't want to mess with this one because this is the one I use for demos. So let me, this is for the playground. I can disconnect all the time. So when you do the connection, let me do it again. And you select the folders, you get the branch. Oh. At the branch, you have something here called Git folder. 
And the Git folder is basically let you select one folder in that Git repo that will have your items. So what this lets you do, what you can achieve with this is you can have something like this that uh, you have um, multiple items in different folders. And when you make that connection using the Fabric Kit, you specify the folder. So if you see, I have here, it's one, this uh, workspace that is the subfolder sales. Mm -hmm. And this is, this only has uh, three reports and one data set. So it's exactly what I have here. So three reports and one data set. And it's connecting to this repo and, and this branch, but it's not, it doesn't have anything for the stocks. Why? Because I'm on the connection, I specify the folder sales. So mm, if I go mm, to the okay. Git integration in here, you will see that ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. the Git folder is sales. So this is, this could be really powerful for you when, if you want to, if you are in a situation where you want to have, let's say, multiple workspaces on the same branch, this is how you can do it. So you can use folders. You need to, today, you need to have all the reports and the data set in the same folder. And by need, yep. it's, there are some workarounds, so we can talk about that. But uh, you need to have it in the same folder uh, because they are relative, relatively connecting with each other. Uh, but you can have nested folders and you can, uh, you can then on the, when you connect, um, uh, this into, into the, into the service, you just need to reference that, uh, that folder. That's awesome. I like that. So, I mean, in pretty much in any kind of organizational structure that to, to the most or for the most part that you want to um, organize your repository in can essentially be accommodated, uh, with the connections. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, and yeah, so, uh, uh, I don't know, maybe we, we, we should open for, for, uh, a few more questions. I don't know if you, sure. if you have sure. any, any questions, I, 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 deep, I, I do have an hour questions. stop yeah. in, in, um, seven minutes more or less. Okay. Yeah. Let, let's do a couple of questions and I will also say if there's anything left that, that's really cool that you, you want to make sure to show before we finish off, uh, feel free to stop me, but I'll throw a couple of questions at you. So. One from another one from Greg. Can a PBIP be opened without the underlying data, similar to a PBIT file, or would it have? Would you have to save it as a PBIT from the PBID? Mm, not sure if I understood the question, but uh, but the PBIP, uh, it's not I guess similar like, to when a you open PBIT. It, when it, when it pull the data in. Yeah. All right. Go ahead. Yeah. When you open the PBIP, it's it's opening a report. So PBIP is targeting mm -hmm. a report and that report, it will connect to a data set. Now the data set, and I don't know if this is the, the answer that, that Greg is looking for. Now, had one clarification, just to quickly mention clarification of PBIP without the cache.abf in the folder. Oh yeah, certainly. Yeah, for sure. Because why? Because when you go, uh, let, let me show you, because this is also a good, good, very good question. Um, so let's say I have this repo and this, this, uh, project was created by you. So you read, you started this project, you connected to the, to the DevOps, you published your work. I'm a new developer and you handed over this project to me. So I'm going to collaborate with you. So I, I, I access the, the, um, the, the DevOps. I have here the, um, my data set, my report, but notice that there is no cache ABF in here. Why? Because one more time, it's not the best practice. We shouldn't put the data into source control. Mm -hmm. It's a binary file. You won't, you won't get any, any advantage. So what I should do is, okay, I will clone this into my laptop because I want to work on it. And, uh, uh, let's create a new folder. Select that destination. So I'm, when you, when you, when you do a, a clone, there are many ways to do it. So the, the way I usually do it is clone with VS code. This will open VS code for me. 
and uh, I should have a folder called within here uh, with uh, with my with the same content that exists in the repo. Now, notice that in this uh, in this folder, let me just close a few things. Um, in this folder, I have a dataset folder, and in the dataset folder there is, there is no cache ABF. The cache ABF doesn't exist. So mm, okay. now if I open the PVIP again, but but I have a model BIM file. The model BIM file is the schema of the of the model. It's, it's the model definition. Mm -hmm. uh, I can I can even open this with Tabular Editor if I want and make uh, edits, uh, creating measures, create tables, whatever I want in here. Um, and when I open the, the the PVIP back in Power BI Desktop, you will see this is what will, is going to happen. So desktop will just open, no problem at all. So I'm the new developer. And come on. I don't know, this is a little bit slower. Oh, I think I, I had to choose a... a I, <laughs> this, this repo is broken uh, and I'm getting an error. Uh, but, um, but what will happen? Let me try to show it in another way. Yeah, I had to choose, I, I choose a, a repo that I, I, I will I, I'll probably I'm, I'm playing with it and I broke the, um, the definition. But this is the same thing. So if I come here and I delete the cache ABF, so I don't have any data. It's the same thing as I'm cloning something from, uh, from DevOps. If I open it, this will just open. And it's kind of a template. Now, I think I understand what Greg was, was mentioning. It's kind of a template, no data at all, just definition. So the model definition, the report definition. And when you open the PVIP again, this will uh, open the report, open the data set. Um, the report will be uh, not in error state, but it will have uh, no data. So you will see that uh, that is, uh, and some visuals will show that there is something wrong. No, actually, no, this is probably something that I, I have uh, on, on my data set, but no data because I don't have any data. If I go to the data view, all my tables are empty, but the definition is, is here and I will get even get a banner telling me that mm, okay, some okay. tables have incomplete or no data and I can just refresh. And if I have access to the data source, I will refresh the, the, um, the, okay. the, the data. Now, Another thing that you can do, then you might say, hey, but but that's a problem because I need to refresh the data again. Can I reuse the cache ABF from read? Sure. So what you can do is you just go to the, uh, okay, this will probably end badly, but uh, <laughs> let me try to. So if you go, if, if you gave me your cache ABF file, and I copy and paste it into the data set and I open it again, now it will open with data because the cache ABF exists and the cache ABF is for that model. Okay. okay. You can even copy so, that over. Uh, cool. Yeah, you can copy that over. It's you could even consider adding the git the, the cache ABF into Git, but you need to really think if if it's worth it and if you need it. The only reason I can see people doing that is if if they if they really want to avoid the, the extra refresh. Because the concept behind the developer mode is that the cache ABF is a local file. It's a, it's it's mm -hmm. a personal file with your data, your development data. So and your cache ABF might be different than mine. So I might wanna I might care about getting the last up to date data on my development and you don't. You are probably just creating and testing some measures and the history data, it's more than enough. Uh, when you go to the service, when you publish, the Git integration doesn't care and in, it, it even ignores the cache ABF. It doesn't, it doesn't use it at all. Um, because and when you publish into the service and uh, through the Git integration, you always need to refresh in the service, okay?
Love it. And I think that was a good deep dive. Uh, if, if we have time, I think I want to do one, hopefully, like, quick question um, yeah, sure. with an answer. And then maybe one more uh, more technical one from Greg. So let's pop this one up for Maroon. He just wants to know, uh, is there any, well, there is there or will there be an API for deploying these into the service? Yes, uh, um, it, there will be API, uh, an API, probably not to deploy a PVIP. You will have APIs that will let you uh, deploy the the report, the, the, the definitions, uh, and also the data set definitions, which in a way is the same thing as deploying a PVIP. Excellent. But uh, the APIs are coming. Um, cannot share. Last so, uh, any <laughs> any yeah, time exactly time. it's what's the microsoft answer of soon right when yeah, it, it will be soon yeah it will be soon, soon. um well, hopefully soon, really sooner one. rather than later right? <laughs> <laughs> exactly um well the uh developer files learn to read parquet files instead of the abf backups okay uh and i think that <laughs> christian uh christian uh, talked about this on uh, on the last podcast uh, on the last uh, episode with you so, uh, and, and for that reason, I, I can talk a little bit about this. So that's the North Star, okay? Today, it's an ABA file. Tomorrow, and because we, in Fabric, we have this one lake, one copy, it's all Parquet. Uh, we also want to make uh, the Power BI desktop and also the Power BI data sets in the service to connect directly to those uh, Parquet files, even if you are in import mode. So of course that uh, today you can use Direct Lake and you can connect to Parquet, uh, but if you have an import data set, uh, that import data set, it's not, uh, it's not being saved into one lake, right? Um, and that's that's a North Star that we, we have. Um, uh, not sure when this will happen, but uh, it, uh, it's, uh, it is something that um, hopefully in the future everything will be will be the, the parquet and uh, you can even you can have an import data set in the service and um, and access to the parquet files of that import set, uh, data set in the service through notebooks. That will be amazing, right? Oh, I, I agree, absolutely. So, okay, that's good to know. Yeah, and and like you mentioned, yeah, Christian already hinted at it a little bit. Yeah, yeah. So something that can be adequately discussed, but it, it's it's the back to the uh, coming down the, um, in the future, and it's the you know when is soon, some sometime soon. It is it is it is a journey, right? So it's a journey. So let's yes. we need to we need to go one step at a time. So we start with direct lake. Yeah, uh, I'm, I'm sure that this this will 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 keep evolving. I'll, I'll finish I'll with. Really I'll finish with. Uh, I think one one question related to deporting, uh, reporting, which is where my uh, my most of my love goes into. Um, but I think that will be a nice uh, ribbon for this. Is uh, I'll actually mirror Greg's question and give it a plus one. <laughs> uh, as as part of formalizing the scheme of reports, will there be an effort to get rid of the nested escape JSON for like the reporting layer? Oh yeah, certainly. Mm -hmm. That's the, that's that's the first thing we need to work on. We are working. Yep. Um, so no more nested uh, escape adjacent because that's there are two main reasons why the 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 report.json or there are a couple of reasons why the report.json it's not good for source control first it's one file uh, so we want to make this a folder and second it's uh it's a massive uh file and and then that nested json and it's because it's a single line nested JSON. This makes it really, really difficult for uh, merge uh, and source control operations. So this is definitely going away. You can uh, you can rely on that. Basically, just think it like I uh, I'd like to think of it as like the it's an RDL. Like you you have the the Timdle, You'll have some some version of that for for, for this. Yeah. Like, I want I want a readable thing and. I just, if and when that happens, I can just imagine a floodgate of like external tools and automated plugins that will automate so many reporting tasks, like one click cleanups and stuff like that. That's my just dream vision for the future. Yeah. Yeah. If, if I can ask you something, don't call sure. it RDL because <laughs> that is already an RDL extension in Power BI. It's for the that's paginated true. reports. Yeah. yeah that's um, true. So it, it will need to have other name. Uh, 
right now we are calling it um, the new report definition format. Uh, <laughs> uh, maybe it will very, be very, R, yeah, R, yeah. RDML report definition. Re, I don't know. Um, report metadata uh, definition language. Yeah, RDL. Uh, something. Rindle. Yeah, but R, RDL definitely not because this will be if we if we name it RDL, this will be uh, really challenging because if you search RDL um, yeah. today, you you will get redirected to paginated reports or report uh, re reporting services right exactly so um rdl definitely not but uh but yeah we'll <laughs> we'll, we'll need to find a, a good name for this well Rui, i do um I, I think we can use that to wrap up i do want to appreciate you coming on to this i love the deep dives and the technical conversations and of course for everyone uh giving really good uh technical questions as well um i think those make it uh, quite fun and interesting there was a few others left uh, but i do know that we um that you have to to run so i want to appreciate your time coming on for this i will certainly look forward to having you back on at some point in the future once the uh the new reporting definition language comes out i think that will be another super fun technical session to have and just talk about all the possibilities and and uh and use cases um and we'll have a whole package for for Power yeah. BI at that point and, and and Git integration. So I think that's a very exciting thing to look forward to. As I said in the beginning, we are just getting started. So I'm I'm sure that yeah. we will have a ton more of opportunities of uh, of deep dive developer stuff uh, in uh, in Power BI. Uh, one more time, thank you. It was uh, always a pleasure talking to you and and and, and being on your show. So um, see you next time. And uh, I cannot promise today but if not next week I, I will go to the chat and uh, I think I can answer some questions there so I'm I'm, I'm also uh, interested to see those those questions I don't I think it, the, the chat will be visible right the chat will be visible um, if you actually want to what I can do uh, I appreciate that I, I can I already have the questions queued up that weren't answered I will send that to you in an email if you just want to do one post as a comment on the video that maybe just answers those oh, yeah feel free yeah. feel free to do that yeah. I'll, I will uh, um, forward yeah. you the, rema the remaining ones from Greg and Arun and a few others. Yeah, send me. I'm um, very interested to, to to get the feedback and uh, and to answer those questions. Thank you. Absolutely. Yeah. Have, have a, a great nice rest one. of Take your care. weekend. <laughs> All right. Bye. Bye bye. Thank you so much for watching. Please consider hitting that like and subscribe button. And if you want to help support this channel, take a look at our channel memberships or our merchandise store for cool swag. And last but not least, please consider sharing this video on your social media platform of choice to help our channel grow. So, until next time.